so um, the Chromium people came to me, who are not here, uh, by Bev Shankar, I think is listening, but not able to talk. And uh, there's other players involved. I'm going to do my best to represent them, but I'm I'm not a domain expert on Chromium. But so, in fact, there's probably people in this room that know more about Chromium than I do. Um, but uh, this is what Plumbers is all about. Um, uh, okay. Okay. So the opportunity is that today Chromium is being updated to talk to other OSs such as Mac OS and Windows, which have QoS APIs. And they came to me and said, hey, what should we do on Linux? And I said, hey, we don't have an API for that. And uh, what if we did? What good things could we do with it? Um, and so, you know, the idea would be ideally they would use the same API for all OSs. Eh, not going to work, but maybe a similar, uh, they do have a separate build for every OS. So, um, you know, there's, that, that's not, so, uh, and this is, this is the, the Chromium people came to me. Thank you very much. And uh, by Bev Shankar in particular helped write this presentation. So some context, things I didn't know about Chromium. Uh, there's actually a link. If you follow this, you can go to see the patch to Chromium that is changing it. Apparently they used to have a notion of priority and now they're changing it to um, thread class, thread type, I should say. Um, secondly, on you know your Ubuntu system, the browser, Chromium browser runs just as a regular process, but um, on Chrome OS, it, it does have the opportunity of elevated privileges. Of course, you could elevate the privileges on Ubuntu too, but this is how things are today. <clears throat> um, I think Vincent already mentioned what's what the problem is with nice. You know, nice is nice if you know what everybody's doing, but it, I can't nice myself and have it mean anything not knowing what everybody else uh, is doing. Um, Real-time classes, extremely powerful. Um, uh, complexity hurdle, portability challenge, um, and permission and trust um, challenge, justified because of the power. It's with great power comes great responsibility. Um, so do you want your Chromium browser to be using real-time classes? Maybe, maybe not. Um, preemption, as discussed earlier today, also um, the value proposition for preemption, I think, is unquestioned. In fact, there's probably multiple value propositions for preemption. Um, how complex to make it is uh, maybe something we still have yet to discover. But again, the question is how best to expose that to, uh, to applications so that we, the kernel, can um, do the right thing without having to guess. Um, and so from actually from my domain expertise would be, you know, what do we do on hybrid CPUs? If we have some hints, we can decide, oh, um, you know, this is a this is a task which is, uh, you know, uh, primarily interested in running in the background. And we just just run it efficiently, save some energy that you can give to the task that is used for interactive performance. Um, Sked idle comes in is a possible uh, a mixture in this stew, and that is, um, you know, uh, one one could imagine that, uh, a, say, a task which we're which we're seeking to run only efficiently would say, hey, please give me sked idle. But then you look at sked idle, and it spreads just like everything else. There's no um, co coalescing, which, if you care about efficiency, is sort of the opposite of what you want to do. Maybe this is just a bug or a feature that we need to fix, but that's another uh, possible thing uh, on the table. And finally, again, from my area, so there's, uh, there's a number of things in the hardware which we can do per task, um, which can help differentiate. You know, it's a zero-sum game. Power is zero-sum. Um, performance is zero-sum. And so I think, actually, Vincent said it earlier, you know, in, in, in the face of ignorance, we treat all tasks as if they all want the same thing. They don't all want the same thing. And if we can tell who's the winner, we can say uh, there's a knob, for instance, on Intel processors that says give this guy more frequency than this guy. Uh, or, you know, on HT, uh, you know, as been discussed many times, you can, have a, you can have a scheduling priority inversion just because the hardware is assuming these two guys are equal. Well, they're not equal. And we can make them unequal if we know. Um, and uh, in fancier chips, there's, uh, you know, 
cache quality of service, there's memory quality of service, there's a whole bunch of other things. Some chips have simple knobs, some have complex knobs, but right now we don't know how to plumb that all the way from uh, the user to actually uh, easily make it easily accessible to the user such that we can um, take advantage of all those folks. So uh, what does Windows do? And this is a quote, I didn't write this. Um, I guess you can read it as well as I can. I'll just say the bottom line, and that is that uh, Chromium is using what Windows calls the high, medium, low, and echo um, labels for their, for their tasks. What they do inside the OS, uh, you'll just have to go read the Windows documentation to figure that out, as, as do I. And uh, this is sort of a summary table. So um, uh, there is a, interestingly, there is a, um, a notion of a, a selection may do something on DC and something else on AC, which is uh, interesting, um, which, which makes sense. Uh, I don't think they used uh, background, but they do use echo. I think uh, in my experience in this area, the most important thing if you're, if you're making um, classes is to have a high and a low, and then the everybody else. You don't need 21 classes, but it's really important to get the high and the low separated because they really do want totally different things. And, and then the guys in the middle. So, you know, any system that we might come up with, I would vote it's, it's probably at least three classes. Um, let's see. Oh, and then there's a media and a deadline. I don't know that they use the deadline class. Um, okay, Mac OS has a sort of an analogous system and um, the Chrome guys say that they're using what's called uh, background, the lowest, user initiated, which is the highest, and user interactive, which is one step below the highest. I believe that the um, user initiated are things that like moving your mouse kind of things, and uh, user interactive, I think, are things that you can see. Um, yeah, immediate results, opening, um, responsiveness and performance. Um, Nearly instantaneous. Okay, so the second class is nearly instantaneous. So, I mean, this is what an application developer is going to read this table and say, hey, my thread is, what is this. And um, I think an important observation uh, is that uh, these schemes, the developer, in this case, the Chromium developer, knows what they're creating a thread to do, right? The cred, I'm creating, a, say, a thread to uh, handle media, and I might have a deadline, and I might, um, um, uh, or I might be a background task, or maybe I'm a tab that's, I don't know, rendering an advertisement, and, and so maybe that's not so important. Um, you know, I'll just run, and, and I wouldn't want to interfere with the interactive response time of the system, let the foreground tab work while the advertisement um, st stalls, or, 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 or kill that task if I can. But I, um, anyway, so uh, they're not they don't actually know anything like nice. They don't know, oh, what's my priority in Linux? They don't know anything about Linux. They don't know anything about Windows. They know about themselves. So I think the solution, um, that solution is very attractive because it's something that actually is sort of portable. You can build your browser with the notion of these are our background tasks. No matter what OS you're running on, everybody seems to have a concept of background tasks except for us. Um, and they don't need to really know about the OS. They don't need to know about any of the hardware hooks that I know about. We can put that in the kernel and plumb this through um, perhaps in these are the other classes. Uh, uh, let me just finish with Apple though. They're, the nice thing about Apple is they're using pthreads. The, the, the not as nice thing is that it's non-portable and it's uh, whatever the ASPL is Apple license. It's not like we can copy that and plumb it. I, I think that's incompatible with our glibc license. But um, let's see. Yeah, let me just put in one more thing before I get to sort of solution space. And that is, um, you know, uh, this is as, 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 as asked by a Chromium application person, what do they want? Um, they want the ability to run tasks, say on today's CPUs, you know, say a hybrid CPU, they, they know that they can do media, for example, on the um, lower performance CPUs and meet deadlines, but they, they don't know how to ask for that. We don't give them a way to ask for that. Um, uh, or an easy way to ask for that, and then they have a couple of numbers for their, their deadlines. So right now what happens is they 
you know, an ITMT, I'll say on an Alder Lake, we'll stick them on a PCOR. And if they go over a certain amount of utilization, we'll ramp up the frequency. The next thing you know, we're burning much more power, uh, meeting deadlines much sooner than they need to be met. Yeah, um, I think, I mean, maybe it's not the- theme. Take your mask. It's, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, it's not the simplest interface, but uh, something like this, you can probably use a deadline. Yes, uh, absolutely. You could use set schedule deadline if you had the sophistication and if it were portable to two other operating. Oh, systems. yeah, I'm saying that <laughs> maybe, I mean, it's not the correct interface. I, I kind of have the pressure. I'm not sure. I mean, my impression is that the scheduler, uh, I mean, what we have in Linux probably is already, I mean, we have the features, but uh, we don't have like, this level of abstraction. To, yeah, to well, with schedule deadline, you actually have to tell it what the deadline is. You can't just say, hey, schedule deadline, because then you've got to say, what is my deadline, right? Yeah. Uh, I was to say, where do you, you want to put that at the live kernel level? It looks like, I mean, I, I understand that Chromium would like some things like that. But from a scheduler point of view, what is I want to run fast? Yeah. I'll, I mean, uh, it looks like we need a, a kind of matrix between, matrix between what user space want and how to use the kernel interface right now. I agree. So this is this is the ask. This isn't a proposed solution. This yeah. is this is the sort of a problem statement. Let me let me take a guess at at that at what you're asking, which I think might be something like this. Okay. Yeah. So what if I'm just throwing this out there? What if we took um, you know our p threads and we said, great, we're going to have I don't know. I've got five classes on here. And what if we made them sked set adders, and we had a sked set adder. QoS hint, right? And then all we've got to decide is, well, well, that plumbing is actually pretty trivial. And then all we've got to do is say, what are the hints and what, what the heck do we do with them, right? And so, um, you know, preemption could be a bit or it could be a number, um, you know, or there could be multiple of them. We could, you know, you could actually even override it to, to make a sked idle class, or you could just play around with the priorities as long as you've got permission to do that, uh, our nice priorities. Um, the one I'm most interested in is the column on the right, because that I can use to hint the hardware to say, great, yeah, you know, I don't know anything about your time quantum, but when you're running, I want to treat you this way. I want to treat you that, um, you know, with maybe very high or very low frequency or an efficient setting on my frequency. Or maybe I want to hint that to run on a specific kind of CPU at a specific C, uh, operating point. And my point is that should, shouldn't it be a library provided? I mean, that can be portable because even from one laptop to another one, probably the configuration can differ. Um, Android is using something like that. They, they have this kind of interface. They are putting the, the top app application in a C group with some feature. They have uh, they have some system background or some display and and everything is done by the the distribution by Android itself, not by uh, the applic the application as the high level interface. The, what I does the library know? I, what are they putting in the library? But I know I I don't know the detail. Some people so, from it, but I mean it's they are just translating some application high level uh, request into. C group configuration, CPU set, oh, okay. priority, and so on. So, and that's it. Yeah. So, um, say this proposal yeah. is actually orthogonal to to those to those knobs. Oh, we yeah. still have C groups and and all their power. Um, this is uh, this is for when you don't have that, pretty much. Um, but you can also have this and that because C groups, of course, are used for a hundred different things. They're used for partitioning systems into. Uh, uh, um, uh, totally into different uses. Um, I don't see the thing about the C, the thing about say say you said okay let's have a let's have a background C group and let's let's say okay let's put all those tasks into the background C group. Well, now I'm I'm the browser writer and um, I've got to have somebody put me into that C group and uh, another OS might not have that. Where the whole time I knew I have this background thread. In fact, I've got five different kinds of threads and I've got 200 of them. I know what they are. I can do that. I can ask them myself. I am honestly the most important application on the laptop by a large margin. It's like 90% of our problem. If we get the browser working well, the system's going to work well. Um, 
So why would I encumber an administrator on, uh, to, to know anything about the hardware? Because the application knows, it gives the hint to the kernel. The kernel's job is to abstract heart vagaries of the hardware on different platforms. In fact, you could have, you know, like we were talking about earlier, you've got these tables, they tell the, they, they tell the kernel about the hardware and you don't really, I don't know, I don't, I, I'm not sure that we have to put that in user but space. Typically, the, uh, coming back on Android, typically each segment of mobile phone manufacturer will set, for example, for the background that they are using Uclum to say background should not run above that because that's where it's more efficient. Above that, you will waste too much power. And it's only the, sub, the mobile phone manufacturer that can do that. Because from one to another one... The right. Phones are verticals, right? That's a yeah. little... Yeah. And, and they, they, have some, they have similar problem to you, or to what you are proposing for Chromium. But my point, and I'm afraid that if we put that directly at the Linux or kernel interface level, then we will be asked that from one SOC or from one laptop to another one, you will have to change what is been behind because on one side, the priority 20 is good for, I don't know, one laptop or Chromebook, but it's not working well for another one because the SOC is more efficient, because it's faster, and it's really platform dependent. Yeah, At least I, I think, again, I, I think, I think, from, from my point position, it's the kernel's job to hide that from, from the application. It's not the application's job to tell the kernel about the I, I'm not saying it's at the application, but the application is using some library. I mean, it's using glibc, for example, so, most of the time. So in this instance, Chrome would say, sorry, I'm here. Uh, in this instance, Chrome would say. Why don't you take your mask off? Sorry. I think you can still hear me well. Uh, when um, Chrome would say, hey, this thread is going to be a background thread that I'm spawning, maybe it's downloading. It'll call into a library. That library will take care of putting it under the background C group. And what the background C group means would be decided by the laptop or Chromebook manufacturer. So Lenovo would say background means use these CPUs with this max frequency, whatnot, but Acer might say something else. I think that's what uh, Vincent is trying to say. I think that will work fine, but it won't work on Ubuntu if they choose to use C groups for something else that's incompatible. But, I thought that's, you're not trying to solve but that's a user space problem, really. I mean, what you want to do is to expose the information about the hardware and the, the properties of the of the low power cores and the and the the the, the power cores out so they so that some user space library can make an informed decision what what to tune and what to pick. And having all this complexity in the kernel, and then you're going to end up in the kernel with defining what default means and everybody has 500 different opinions about what default is and this is not going to 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 work well in in the context of the kernel but you can make it work well if you expose the information and let the user space create some policy around it just expose the mechanism and the information but not do policy in the kernel i don't think that will work uh, I agree with the principle of keeping policy out of the kernel for sure. Um, absolutely. Uh, I mean, another way to look at this is each of those classes you're defining are literally just C groups, right? You can create a, a, how, how many ever C groups you want for each of those classes. Um, yes. Uh, you can also take the point of view that you're the scheduler and you've got a head of queue and you could give a damn what C group the next task is and you can have uh, per task properties that are different than every other task in the system and all you want to do is go and, 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 and do that without having to figure out to, to, go into, to, to look at the group he's in. Um, uh, you know, the other, well, the other problem with C groups is that they're hierarchical and if you have a per task property, he can run anywhere in the system in any group. We, we have a question from Quais, uh, Revolt. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I actually wanted to say Japan because we are looking at something similar in Android. And C group interface is useful, to be honest, but it's uh, very aggressive, like in terms of very coarse grain. 
uh, what we are trying to move to is into like kind of per task API where like application give a direct hand. And this is actually done in the middleware. So we're trying to uh, do the QS kind of control in the middleware using uClamp. Uh, I've shared the link to an API that's currently in Android, I think 12, where uh, the applications can basically give a deadline to the middleware and and then the middleware will end like every time it finishes the work, it tells the middleware like, hey, I've done. And then that middleware will measure this time and either boost the work or reduce the boost using UCLAN min to ensure it's meeting its target deadline. Uh, and well, that can be used for also efficiency. And I think at least in some discussion on LKML, uh, Paul from Mozilla was looking to use UCLAN max to as well dynamically control <coughs> the maximum performance point the application can use or the task can use so that it, it saves power. Uh, so there is room for to do some work at the middleware and that's the point I'm trying to say and it will be nice to have actually something very generic uh, that can be used by any any uh, distribution um, because the current maybe Android solution is specific to Android programming model but I'm sure we can extend that concept to for other distributions. Uh, by having a library that does all this QS work. Great, who's responsible for that library? Yeah, I think the community needs to, to do. Um, I think I'm just agreeing with, with Thomas over here is that at the, at the kernel level, maybe maybe we need a bit more. I think we are missing some stuff. Like I like that ideas of like spreading versus, uh, versus like uh, packing and latency. Information, uh, but like with background task or something else, I think that's more suitable for a middleware kind of uh, a library that does this work actually. Yeah, because just, I just one point. Yeah, sorry, there's like one minute left. So you could take this first column, put the information in the kernel associated with every thread, then the rest of that could be configured by user space through SSFS files. I mean, that would solve it, right? No, that solves nothing because it's too centric on a particular uh, on a particular workload, uh, like the Chromebook thing. But if you look at servers, if you look at real time systems, the left table is just useless. Sure. So, so don't do this to the kernel because this is really policy which is system specific. So it's totally different on a on a on a Chromebook. It's totally different on a phone, and it's totally different on a real time system, where you have totally other constraints. But you really want to use the 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 power information as well, because we have uh, uh, battery driven real time systems too. So um, expose the expose please expose the information which is necessary to do an information and have the mechanics to actually into the kernel or put it into c groups or whatever whatever the fancy of the day is so i'm hearing that uh, people like c groups because it's easy for them to be administered by somebody uh, the, it's not the uh, even the even the even, even without c group I mean, you can, even without C group, you can, if you have a, a middleware, as the case was mentioning, between your application and between the application and kernel, you can say, I want this task thread right. to but be this kind. At and the end of the set... day, at the end of the day, when I switch in a task, I need to know what setting to do this set to. Where do I get yeah. that? Exactly. You need a mechanism to attach that information to the task. Right. I need and some and task whether that, that could be the group he's in or it could be per task. Could be yeah. groups, could be per task, could be whatever. That needs to be sorted out, but provide the mechanism and not, not, not map it to policy. Policy is user space. Last point for Joel. Joel gets the last word. So about. Uh, about the policy in the kernel, I think your last talk or a couple of talks back, you mentioned reading the, ta the classifying the workload in the kernel. So it right. sounds like this is already a thing, like workload well, classification. We, right? yeah, 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 but we can we honestly we we do pass some of that information to user space and where that can be acted on. But uh, for low level decisions where we we can we can optimize performance by knowing that. 
the class. In that case, it's the class of ISA that you're running. It's not the my identity is I'm a background task. I could be doing Vien and I as a background task. That doesn't mean I should be running a high performance core. They're sort of they're, they're separate things. You're right. Okay, well, it's a good discussion, and it seems like there's more to discuss. Thank you.